Okay, I'm getting ready to wire up my tag boards on this uh, GMI era AC15 build. And I wanted to talk a bit about the tag boards themselves. The modern tag boards that you're going to find are going to look like this. We've got 18 uh, pairs of, I guess, terminals on each side of the board, making a total of 36. Um, unfortunately, the um, traditional Vox amplifiers used longer boards, and those are no longer available. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a traditional layout for an AC-15. We have 36 rows of conductors on the uh, terminals on the strip. On the bottom row, we have 32. So fortunately, with 18 times 2 is 36, here you can also use two and cut maybe one of those a little bit short. On the AC-30, However, we still have the 36 on top, but we have 42 on the bottom. So you would need more than two of these modern strips. So the question is, well, how do you put them together? And what I've seen people do is, uh, I've seen them epoxy them together. Uh, one of the problems is, is that you can see there's, on the side, there's a little bit of a buffer and if you butt two of those together, it's not going to work. So what you have to do is cut down that so it has the right spacing when you put them together. Like I say, some people have epoxied them together. What I elected to do is just put a couple of extra holes. So I found a place where I drew up, drew up my circuit. Here's my preamp layout. I drew up my circuit and I found some of the holes were already in the chassis to mount that long 36 terminal board, but some of them were not. So I found places where it made sense in the circuit to, and mechanically to drop in a mounting hole and drilled those in the, in the chassis. So what I did is I made a copy of this and I have, I have little templates for each of the three sections of the tag board. And then I took those templates and I put them on a piece of 2x12 I had laying around. And I've got some screws, I've got some nuts to lift it up off the board. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bolt my tag strips to this board. And it'll match the corresponding holes that I have drilled over here. And then I can add the electrical components to the tag boards without having to worry about getting in the chassis and soldering around all the components there. So when this is completed, I can just drop them in and wire them up. Okay, I have my template board made up. One thing you'll notice is I've got kind of a large gap in the middle of these boards. And I realized the reason was is because I stacked my templates here. In my 3D model, I did not cut out the extra on the edges. I just butted those together and kind of hoped for the best. Uh, fortunately, when I put the holes in the chassis, I use the actual boards because sometimes these holes don't exactly line up with the terminals and I wanted to get it just right. So again, this is the kind of spacing that you would have if you did not remove those pieces, then your holes would not line up in the chassis. So that's one of the steps you'll have to do. If you're going to make a box style amplifier using these tag boards and you want to go longer than 18 terminal positions. So next step, wire it up. Excerpts of the components. I thought I want to take a moment and talk about some of the parts that I've got. Most of what I'm using here is carbon composition resistors. Uh, I was able to find a lot of the half watt varieties on Mauser. For some of the two watt varieties, I had to go to Mojo Tone and get some of their carbon composition resistors. But what I wanted to do to make this uh, build really special was to see if I could find some new old stock capacitors, the type that were used in the original JMI era amplifiers. And first of all, those are very expensive these days. Um, fortunately, I was able on Europe to I was able to go to eBay and find over in Europe some uh, some parts that were that would work very well. First of all. We have the original WEMA capacitors. Now, um, 
I'm not sure what they used in the original AC30s, but I was able to find some uh, 0.047 microfarad WEMA capacitors. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or the other type that I have in my build. But just to have these and find these was very cool. And it wasn't priced outrageous, this being kind of my dream box amplifier. I was willing to pay a little bit more. But it wasn't something that was absolutely crazy. Next, I've got some 0 0.047 microfarad um, mustard type caps. Now these were made in Italy. These are Bianchi caps and they are supposedly uh, have are made on the same tooling as were the Phillips mustard mullard caps. So those will probably go on my build as well. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the Wemas or the mustards. I'll have to make that decision pretty soon, I suppose. Speaking of the mustard caps, I was able to actually find some for a good price with one trick. These are radial capacitors. So instead of being an axial capacitor like this one, which are very expensive, there are some good prices on radial Phillips mustard caps. Um, and the bonus of that is that these little tiny leads are going to fit really great on my little tiny tag strips here. That's a 0 0.022 microfarad and here's a 0 0.1 microfarad. These are rather large. A lot of times you'll see these on tag strips for box things where I mean they're almost as big as the they're bigger than the tag board, but these are also going to fit just great on this tag board. So pretty cool idea to be able to find some nice capacitors of the correct era that'll fit in there and will sound hopefully just amazing. I've kind of decided where this mustard cap's going to go. In my phase inverter circuit, I have the 0 0.047s. Um, I think that I'm going to go with the Wemas there to kind of get the mixture of the two different capacitors that um, were used in the in the JMI era builds. Now, as I mentioned about the radial caps, you can know this 0 .0047 microfarad barely fits in there. I'm trying to bend these leads out a little bit here so that I can get it to cram in there, but that's a huge capacitor for these tiny tag strips. So uh, hopefully I can find a good place for it. Yeah, I have the first tag board wired up and I thought I would uh, talk about some of the experiences that I had with this. Um, first of all, I've got my Philips 47 nanofarad capacitor here. It's going to be in the normal channel. Um, now these radial mustard caps, I mentioned they were just going to fit and in fact they do. I had to bend the leads a little bit and then I also had to bend the tag strips on each side little terminals in a bit to be able to catch those leads and to get them soldered in place. I wanted to kind of uh, talk about the best way that I think to get some of these soldered and I'm going to do it upside down the way I did it but I think it's best if you slide one end of the resistor through the terminals like this then take your clippers and clip the resistor right at that point. Then use some small pliers and pull it through right where you want it. Make a bend and solder that in place. Once that's in place, go ahead and trim this lead, make a little bend so we have some mechanical retention, and then solder that into place. And that seems to be the best way to get those soldered right where you want them. And I think that this first portion looks great. Um, next, I'll be doing the lower part of the preamp of the phase inverter. This part, I'm going to have to wait probably a week, a week and a half to do. Uh, when I wired my input jacks, the one meg resistors that I used were supposed to go in this position. I got some quarter watt resistors for the input jacks, but I used my half watt resistors at the on those input jacks 
And so I only have quarter watt resistors to use in my, um, in my phase inverter. So I'm probably going to go ahead and order a, another set of those. Um, see if I have any other parts. I'll, I'll, I'll wire everything else up and wait for those resistors. Make sure that I have all the parts that I need so I can get that last order in if I need any more. Um, you can see that I've got my preamp boards wired up. All the components installed. I've had to go through and add little jumpers between some of these tags. And I want to show you the way that I did that. When I trim my resistors, I try to keep the leads handy. And I have a pile of these. Actually, at work, I was working on a project and uh, over in another person's area, was using some of their equipment. And I needed to jumper just a little tiny piece. And I asked him, hey, where's your cut sections of resistors? And he looked at me like I was crazy. Like, I said, well, I save those so that I can jumper very tiny things. So bending these into little staples, inserting them in here and soldering them in is a good way to connect two of these components that need to be connected together. I really like this way of putting the tag boards on the this piece of wood and then putting the templates beneath it. I went through and I double checked all my connections to make sure that they're all proper. And now all that's left to do is to drop these into the chassis and get them wired up. Okay, I've run into a couple of issues that I wanted to talk about a little bit. The first of all is there is an incredible tiny amount of space between the end of this tag board and the chassis here. Now I had hoped that if I pre-wired the potentiometers I could quite easily loop those down and solder them on but there's not a lot of space in there. Um, another issue is get this wire out of the way here. I've got these quarter inch uh, spacers between the chassis and my boards and I've got just barely enough to clear the tube sockets. So these are almost banging into each other. I think another quarter inch spacer would be nice. Maybe another eighth inch of a spacer just to raise that up a little bit. But then I'm going to be a little closer to the potentiometers, which isn't a big deal. But for right now, the big deal is the space between here. And now that I've got all of the components installed, it's going to be hard to solder those onto the ends of the tags. So if you are going to pursue a build like this, I would suggest that you pre-wire all the wires going from this end of the tag board to the potentiometers and other places in the circuit. That way, you'll be able to more easily solder those ends up here rather than try to solder these ends down here. Now I'm going to continue and, and go forth with this. I'm just going to do one thing at a time until everything's completed. I might have to move some things out of the way, pull some tensiometers out that aren't being used at the moment. Um, another problem I've run into is I realized that I didn't really have a grounding scheme. Um, now, for the power amp, the only grounding point I have, I've got a dual can capacitor, and that's got a ground on it, and all of my power amp grounds are going to that point. So I've got a star ground there, but for the preamp, the only ground points I have are to these axial capacitors. This is a dual 8 microfarad capacitor, and you'll notice that it's got one ground on the end. And my 47 microfarad has one ground on the end. That gives me two grounding points for the uh, preamp section. And I've gone through and hope, and it looks like that's going to work out okay. I had to go and modify my layout to determine where the ground points are going to go to. Uh, but that did take uh, quite a while to do. I, I should have planned that ahead of time. So, again, plan ahead. Solder your wires to the to the front of the tag boards 
and then solder them to the potentiometers. And make sure you've got your grounding scheme before you go to solder and realize that you haven't thought about it enough. So I'm going to push through and try to get this completed, and I'll report back. Okay, I've got the preamp wired up. I dropped the boards in uh, one at a time and then just started at one end and came across and did these very carefully. Sometimes I had to go with the soldering iron one side versus the other to be able to clear the capacitors and other things that were poking out. I went ahead and installed the ground wires on the tag boards before putting the boards in because it was going to be really hard to get this thick ground wire that I use to come back in to, to solder it up on, in the back there since they, the ground wires are going below and then coming to their ground points. Um, another thing that I I went through and I, I fixed my grounding. Um, I've got my ground point here and here that I'm using for the preamp. So that's all wired up. I went ahead and did my DC power. Um, it, the main power for the preamp comes in here and then splits up through this 22K resistor, 10K resistor for the top boost channel. And then for the inputs, we've got uh, 22K. And then here's the capacitors for each of those sections. So what's left to do, I think that I've got everything wired up. I'm going to go and check it against the schematic. As I was wiring this, I got a nice bright yellow marker. And I marked each wire and each connection as I went just to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. And everything looks to be completed. So now I'm going to take go through the schematic. I like to take that with a take a highlighter pen, print out a copy of the schematic, and just highlight every connection that I verified with the multimeter. So ohm it out, get the connectivity, you know, continuity beep, and then mark that line, and do that two or three times if you need to, until you're confident that you have wired everything up correctly. Now one thing that I want, I think I want to do is to build a light bulb limiter. This is a device that allows you to save yourself from having short circuits and having them destroy components or blow fuses. And the reason that I would like to do that, let me just go to the other side here, show you the other side. And the reason that I think I would like to do that is I'm using these um, old 1960s poles from a Hammond organ. Um, I think that some of them are Mullards, some of them might be RCAs. That's not the most stable thing on there. Some of them may be RCAs, and I believe that I tested them in like a single 5 watt amplifier, single ended 5 watt amplifier, after I first pulled them because. My tube tester, uh, which is just kind of a continuity tester, it basically wires everything as a diode and makes and makes sure it has emission. That's the word, emissions tester. So my my tube tester doesn't test EL84s because the internal connections connections in there will cause a short on my tube tester. So I tested them in an amplifier, I believe, but I've never run pairs of them together and rather than to blow up my power transformer and have to spend another $125 then I think I would like to build a light bulb limiter have another tool to use during amp building and debug and also kind of protect those tubes and the other components that I've used here so I'm gonna go through and ohm it out we'll see if we get the light bulb limiter uh, built and the next video will be testing the amplifier.